In this week's parsha, Bahaloscha, we find the uh, rather well-known story of Aaron and Miriam speaking about Moshe and being critical of him. God was not happy with that and corrected them. And that's when Miriam came down with leprosy and the entire people waited for her to heal before they moved on to their next stop. What happened was this. After Moshe came down off the mountain with the Ten Commandments, he was not intimate with his wife. Miriam was particularly critical of Moshe, and she said, what, is he the only person God speaks to? There are other prophets, and God speaks to them too. And they don't separate from their wives. So what's with Moshe? Why is he holier than everybody else? Which is a legitimate criticism. Being holy doesn't mean you disconnect from the world. It means you bring holiness to the world. But God was not pleased with the criticism, and he said to Miriam, you're right about everybody else, but Moshe is different. He's an exception. Why? Every other prophet, when I decide to communicate with the prophet, then he experiences a prophecy. It's an occasion. It's an event. With Moshe, we are constantly in contact. Moshe is permanently in a state of prophecy. And so he is the exception. In the description of Moshe's greatness, God also says he was the most humble person ever. We learn from this that humility brings prophecy. Because it, it sounds like because he was so humble, that's why he had this prophecy condition. We find in the Talmud, among the sages, who say that humility makes the Shekhinah present in your, in your life. A person who is humble, the Shekhinah is present. In another place, we're told that humility brings inspiration. Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, where you are inspired. It's not exactly prophecy, but what you're saying and what you understand is all orchestrated above in heaven, and you uh, in instinctively, intuitively uh, echo what is going on in heaven. It, it's something like prophecy, but not exactly the same. Some say it's a lower level prophecy, and some say it's even higher than prophecy. But here's what the Rebbe explains about these three aspects of humility. Does it bring prophecy? Does it cause the Shekhinah to be present? Or does it bring the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, inspiration? You know, like we say, all the sages, their teachings were all inspired. In other words, they were actually saying what God thinks. Not that God told them to say it, but they intuitively are the voice of God through this inspired understanding. So which is it? So the Rebbe says, there are three kinds of humility or three levels of humility. One level of humility is, I know what I'm worth, I know my talents, I know my abilities, I know how great I am. Because what's true is true. Moshe knew how great he was. He knew what he could do which was more than any other human being could. 
He knew all this, and yet he was humble. What was the humility? He didn't give himself credit for his greatness. He, he considered it a gift, privilege, not something of his own accomplishment. And so he was grateful for the gift, but he wasn't arrogant about it because he knew that it wasn't his own doing. And he assumed that if someone else had been given the same gifts, the same privileges, the same advantages, they would have worked harder and used those gifts more successfully and would have accomplished more than he did. That was a distinct possibility. That's one level of humility. That the other person, given the same gifts that I have, would possibly, might likely, have done a better job with it. The second form of humility, or level of humility, is not only that the other person might have done better, but that the other person would certainly have done better. In other words, it's like, I know I didn't maximize it. I know I didn't use it to its full advantage. Everybody else would have. And so not only does he humble himself, like in the first level, I didn't do everything I could with it, Somebody else might have done better, but he actually assumed in his humility that everybody else would certainly have done better. So these are two different forms of humility. One is, I am not all I should be, and the other is, everyone else is better than me. is more deserving, not necessarily more talented. The third level of humility is where a person, despite all their greatness, despite all of their advantages, despite all of their um, superiority in many ways, devotes himself to the service of those who are far less gifted far less uh, accomplished. And it feels right. Like, for example, Moshe defending the people who created the golden calf. Defends them. Uh, the people came to Moshe and said, we need meat. This food from heaven is okay, but it's not meat. And Moshe says to God, I'm supposed to give them meat? Is that part of my job description? <laughs> I'm a teacher, I'm a prophet, I'm a, I'm a scholar, I'm a, an inspiration. Meat? I have to give them meat? God said yes. So he made sure they would have meat. And that included the people who made the golden calf. And Moshe was completely okay with that. That is the third level of humility. And where do we see that? The Gemara says, God created the world. That's not an act of greatness. That's an act of humility. Because it is so beneath God's dignity to create a physical universe. God lowered himself to our level to make the world what it is. And he runs the world constantly, making sure we have meat. So we see from God that no matter how great you are, you lower yourself to the needs of inferior beings, and that feels okay. That is the highest degree of humility. Now, since there are three different kinds of humility, 
it must also produce three different results. The first humility, where you know you're not uh, worthy of the of the of credit for your own greatness, that makes the shechina close. The second level of humility, where everybody else appear, appears superior to you than yourself, that brings the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. The third level of humility, in which we are actually imitating God, who lowers himself into the world to take care of our mundane physical needs, that brings prophecy. Moshe had all three. And so when God tells Miriam Moshe is different, that's how different he was.